All right, so then let's get started. So firstly, thank you for speaking to me today, Larissa. Um, you know, before we get started and dive into like your journey with Atlin, could you tell us a little bit about your background and your role uh, at, at CSE? Oh, sure, absolutely. Um, I've been in the business of, uh, you know, data management for 25 years. So in the past uh, 14 years, I've been in an insurance company. So I've been uh, working for CAC particularly for the past six years. It's actually my sixth year anniversary uh, in January. And that was quite an experience. Uh, it's very different uh, from my previous experiences in a way that it's a sm much smaller company. And as any small company, uh, it has its own culture, its own specifics. And uh, the thing I love most about that is that you have a chance to get your hands dirty and wear so many hats during the day, I, I sometimes stop counting. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, and, and what does your role at CSE look like? What, what all do you do? Uh, well, uh, I am a director of the business intelligence team at CSC. And this is, um, you know, the team that is responsible for uh, a corporate data warehouse for data managing processes, ETLs, um, you know, reports and dashboards. And uh, we utilize uh, a set of tools that uh, we picked uh, about five years ago and, and kind of the whole project of getting CC into the 21st century, so to speak, of data management uh, was something that was keeping me busy for the past uh, six years. Got it. Awesome. So basically everything data at CFC is, is what you're talking Is my name. Yes. Got it. Awesome. And tell us a little bit about CSC and why data is important at CSC. Well, uh, you know, I've heard this expression recently that data is a new oil, right? So, uh, you know, the insurance companies um, have so many aspects of the data and um, it's, fundamentally important for the company ability to actually uh, support the business during challenging times, um, to estimate exposures, uh, calculate possible losses and optimize the product. So many sides of the business, very, very data heavy. And uh, for that reason, you know, you cannot do in, in our day and age, you cannot do an informed decision without having a really reliable, accurate validated data. Uh, and uh, basically at the end of the day, what we're trying to do is make it so that our customers are happy and what we offer them uh, is what they actually need. And for that reason, uh, it has been so important for us to kind of turn around and get us to the point when we can, we, we can do that. And it especially was challenging at CAC because CSC is a very old company. I don't know if you ever checked us out, but we were founded in 1949. And, uh, and also there is a very interesting thing about CSC. Um, uh, it was uh, founded as a company for um, civil workers, basically for teachers, firefighters, police officers and such. We of course uh, continue covering this population, but we also offer insurance to the rest of the people. It's just that we're kind of trying to make it so that it um, it makes sense and it's easy for our customers. That's super cool. Yeah. And so then tell me about your journey because, you know, obviously like, you know, you have been taking this journey of building like a modern data platform in a yeah. younger, older organization. Like what has been the journey since the time you started to uh, and, and walk us through that journey? It's a really good question because, well, when I started, I was actually brought in to build the BI platform for CAC. And, uh, you know, starting from approval by uh, our C team to putting together the team, then uh, picking the tools and selecting the BI software that we think was, was suitable. And there were so many criteria that go uh, towards that. Then designing the architecture, actually building it out creating the data warehouse. Uh, we launched it in 2017. Uh, the first, the first uh, phase of it went, went live in 2017. And then in 2018, we uh, selected uh, Tableau and kind of uh, started doing our first dashboards. And it's funny how when the first dashboard that we created, I have um, you know, one of my people who worked on it really hard and wanted to impress people. And so it was very, very fancy, really nice looking dashboard for our sales group. 
And then um, when they did the demo, the leader at the time, he looked at it, he said, well, it looks so awesome, but you know, if I'm gonna show it to 1500 agents at our conventions, we need something a lot simpler. <laughs> Something that would be a less, to, you know, will take less time to train on. And so there's, uh, you know, sometimes you're trying to shoot for the stars, but you have to take into account how people are ready for those changes. And I have to say one of the biggest challenges that I had was not necessarily the technology and not necessarily, you know, building things, but more so um, explaining things, training bringing people up to speed, making them, actually persuading them that this is a better route. And another example would be, uh, we had a, a project where people were using cell phones uh, for, for, for reporting. And then we created a dashboard, but it wasn't an Excel and it didn't look like an Excel. So we, we're trying to trick them sometimes by, oh, well, we do two dashboards. The one would be, a modern day uh, anal analytical dashboard in Tableau and another one would be very much looking like Excel. And we will release both of them to them and say, hey, you can look either one of them, but sometimes you might want to check the other side. And we've been observing people kind of gradually moving. And as, as they start to understand how things work, as they start to be comfortable with what they see, they move from, uh, you know, from one design to another. And so there's a little, uh, there's a little of, uh, you know, um, uh, game, so to speak, going into into how you want to uh, introduce things to people. And That's cool. So, like, are you actually so then when you're like shipping a new dashboard, do you actually ship like one that is like an Excel version and then the other that is that's like yeah, we we did uh, that at the beginning because it we we had a really uh, tough time the first year we released uh, you know we productionalized a few things in Tableau. Uh, with people who were traditionalists and that kind of really get set about their, uh, the, their ways. Imagine, you know, it's a pretty established, pretty yeah. old company. And we have a lot of people who've been with the company for years and years. So uh, this is a tough audience oh. to sell something so different. And so we were trying to make this transition as smooth as possible for them. And, and that proven to be a success because we, uh, you know, we launched in 2018, and by 2020, we saw just like a, a burst of uh, activities in dashboards. We now have people who are asking us to get them just an extract so they can do their own stuff. So it's like really empowering our users. That was um, part of the, that was most exciting for me in this journey. And, uh, and the last part of my five-year plan uh, was actually, um, you know, kind of establishing certain data controls and, uh, you know, data governance and cataloging the data and making sure that the definitions are captured. And along that way, we tried uh, literally a lot of things. And as a small company, we did not have a lot of time at our hands. So we were documenting as much as we can. And we used SharePoint for that, right? So we had, we, you know, we created a BI wiki page for uh, company people to go and you know, click on the documents and see them, and then training pages and training videos and all kinds of things. Then we realized that even then we still cannot keep up with how fast we develop things and documenting them is always lagging behind. The moment you release the document, it gets obsolete right away. And so it's really tough. And anyone who worked in the data world knows that if you join the company, as a data analyst and you want to learn the data and you go to your uh, database admin and say, hey, do you have a schema for this particular environment? And he will say, no, <laughs> you know, because it's impossible to maintain those things. Uh, everyone knows those challenges. And so um, that was one thing. And then another thing was, of course, uh, different teams were using different flavors of the definitions. and. You know, we really wanted uh, to make sure that we have a company standard for fundamental definitions that defines uh, insurance business. And we had, uh, you know, a glossary, but that glossary lived again in Excel. Uh, we wanted to make sure that people are aware of what database has to offer if they want to research, but these people needed to learn SQL to do that. So to facilitate that, we even did a thing, like we created a dashboard in Tableau that is a data discovery dashboard that was simply querying the information schema for people and, and they could go and type in the fields and see them. 
Uh, so we tried a lot of things and all the solutions were kind of, you know, they're good for the time being, but they were not uh, giving us uh, everything we needed. And uh, the last thing that we did was, um, you know, we released our own BI portal. Uh, mm -hmm. we, we kind of built a place where we thought people would uh, go in. And, and, and again, it had, it was really nice. It's still used. Uh, it has uh, company KPIs, like a running thing in there. It has links to our tools, uh, you know, so people can click and go again. It has links to our SharePoint where the documents live. But again, it's you have to go find the website. You, go, you, you click on one thing, you go in one environment. You click on the other thing, you go into another environment. And we noticed that, yeah, people were excited when we released it, but little, you know, sometime down the road, it, it just kind of, um, you know, again, became one of the things. So I was really looking for something that can sort of address all of those challenges and give us a place. So we started uh, assessing some of the tools on the market and that's how we end up finding you guys. That's actually a great segue. And actually, you know, and I know you mentioned that you were trying to find like a bunch of different kinds of solutions and um, yeah. to, the, to the broad like context problem that data teams often have, right? Uh, what was the real pain though? Like, why was this such a big problem? Like, why? Why was this something that your team was dedicating time to like try and solve? Like um, what, what was like, was it that the team was losing productivity answering these questions? Was it that your broader team was not getting access to context? What was the real pain here that was important to you? Um, actually, both of those things that you mentioned, first of all, we were spending so much time trying to get the reports together because, you know, one of the things that is kind of separates uh, insurance business from other businesses is that when you're doing insurance, you have, you're dealing with a lot of legacy data. And uh, that data lives in an archaic database that got, you know, maybe uh, retired a few years back, but the data is still there. And uh, the challenge is also that you have uh, to use all of this history. In insurance, you, you cannot get rid of the data, you need to, for a lot of reasons, regulatory reasons, uh, you know, litigation reasons, whatever they are, you need to preserve a lot of this uh, uh, archaic history. And that was the first challenge, even when we were building Data Warehouse, was one of the uh, selling points for me at the time was that I needed a place where all of this data can live together so we can report instead of grabbing things from a variety of places. Hmm. Um, another thing was that, um, a lot of things I managed uh, on the business side uh, at the product level at insurance companies. And it's really hard when, you know, the new round of executives join and they have all these cool ideas about upselling, cross-selling, and doing bundles and things like that is to discover what is it that we call a customer, right? So we have an insured, we have a claimant, but we, we, we don't really have a, a, a customer-centric view of the data. And, uh, um, you know, building something out like that is a, a, is a big challenge. And so that's, um, you know, having, having a place where we can um, define those things and also kind of show, um, you know, what particular assets are linked to those uh, things and that people can find this information so they can make decisions is uh, another, another aspect of why it was important. And of course, uh, you know, right now, one of the discoveries I made along the way is working in Atlan is that, that my team is actually going to be so, you know, empowered by having it because, uh, you know, the productivity, right? So if you have uh, answered a certain question and you wrote a certain query and you produced a certain report, yeah, you documented it on a SharePoint. The new analyst joins, the new analysts have no clue. This is a, like a, you call it a tribal knowledge, right? This is a, a knowledge that lives in people's heads, not necessarily being transferred every single time. And onboarding is, oh my God, it's such a challenge, right? And so now in uh, within the tool, we have an ability to capture those uh, answers to those questions with the queries and with, uh, you know, brief explanations of what they are. So everyone can find them just like that if we train them to use the tool. And so I've been really, instead of typing an answer to a question into an email, we are inserting a link to the Atlan in that email so they can go and find that answer and we, and we help them along the way. That's awesome. That's awesome. 
Um, and like, tell me a little bit about just the journey to finding the right solutions. I know you tried a bunch of internal tools and, and like internal solutions in some ways. And then like from there, when you decided you want to bring on a tool, like what was the journey to find the right solution? Why did you pick Atlin? Uh, well, the journey started with a C team meeting that identified the lack of the controls over data, the lack of clarity in definitions, and uh, the lack of data uh, catalog uh, as a risk for the company. And because you know, we want to bring company to compete with other providers and to be competitive, uh, we need to have all the things. So uh, I was kind of given a task to say, okay, this is your goal for the year. You need to find, uh, identify the tools that would kind of address those things, but also it shouldn't, uh, you know, be super expensive. It, it should be easy to use. It should be all the things, right? And so we did, as every company is doing, we did an assessment of a few tools and I asked my team to kind of look around. And uh, I believe we looked at Alation, we looked at Informatica, maybe a few other tools. And then when I looked at Atlan, you know, a person who pointed me to this tool she said, you know, take a look. It's just uh, so easy. I don't even have to comment on this. Just take a look at the demo. And I, I saw your demo for the first time. And I had this feeling that uh, it's so easy. And it's because it's almost as if it knows what I'm looking for <laughs> before I even <laughs> start clicking. Um, it was so natural um, in its, uh, you know, in how the, the things were uh, built together and how, you know, the navigation works and how, you know, you see things and, uh, you know, you just type in Google-like search and you can find uh, information right away. But what was actually a decisive point is when we started, you know, working with a team and, you know, how easy it was to communicate. And um, I think one of the biggest things that separates you guys from other vendors uh, was, um, you know, this feelings that you know the data people so well. I didn't know all the history of your company ahead of time, but you know our pain. You, you, you have this empathy towards people, people's pain, and you look at, at the things and you start explaining things and people get you right away. They know what you're talking about. And, and that was the decisive uh, moment for me. That's amazing. That's amazing. When we actually started a company, even before we built a product, like. There's actually a, like people used to tell us like, what is going to be your biggest competitive differentiator? What is your differentiator? And we would literally say like, we were the data team. <laughs> like we get this, like it needs to be, there needs to be a better way. And we know that, like we feel the pain and like that, like that empathy will hopefully differentiate us. So thank you for saying that. That means a lot. Of course. Um, I'd love to hear about what was the initial implementation strategy? How did you go about implementing Atlan? This is the thing. We are a very, very small company. And therefore, my team, um, you know, being so small, uh, manages a lot of things simultaneously. So I was wondering, well, uh, I need to set up a lot of time to be able to set something like that up. And whether or not I will even have that ability uh, with all the other things. And uh, so I had a one dedicated resource. And my... My thinking was we will go through, uh, you know, initial setup and then we will find time along, you know, our other projects to uh, add context to the, um, to the initial setup. But turned out after, I guess, three or four days when we finally found time, you know, operations team and you guys, and so we did an initial uh, installation. It was so easy. And then, um, you know, we started uh, looking into, um, actual data within the within the tool and I was like oh my god it, it, that's it it's already all of it is already there and uh, yeah the, well some of the stuff we uh, encountered along the way that required some um, tweaking and um, that you know basically is more on us I would say because you have to really um, document things well and use some of the things um, like comments on the fields and stuff like that and you know, labels in the tableau to be able to really benefit fully from the richness of, uh, of Atlan, right? But at the end of the day, we now figured out uh, what needs to happen. So we, we kind of um, are mindful that we really want it to be useful when we're done with the project. So we, we do all those things. And it made us think about how we are actually putting things together, even in a database, say, for example, we have a very rich data set that is a modeling 
data set for our actuaries. Naturally, it has so much data, but if someone like a, a product manager would uh, happen about it in Erlang, that person will get extremely confused with what they see. So we uh, you know, now are devising things so that, well, we don't necessarily want to present all of this to entire company. We want that to be a specific area, but we really want people to kind of have a mainstream within the Atlant where they would go. So start with glossary, find your term and definitions that you're looking for. You see all the assets right there, down there, right? Go to this particular thing that has a green site on it, which is, you know, we verified that that's what you would like to use. So click on it and then go from there rather than just leave them alone. And so those were kind of things we were tweaking as we were sort of in an implementation phase of the project. But all in all, it didn't really um, took as much time as I was expecting. And, um, you know, and I had uh, actually feedback from uh, two developers that actually did that. And uh, one was doing mostly on the database side and the, the other one was doing Tableau. Uh, and both of them were, um, you know, really surprised of how, um, you know, easy that process was for them. Got it. Out of curiosity, like how much time had you budgeted for it and how much time did it actually take for you to do? Well, I budgeted uh, about maybe three to four months for a one full-time developer to be on it. Mm -hmm. So if you would be 100% of it all the time, your timeline would be even short. And mind that we're a small company, bigger companies that have bigger resources, it might be a very different journey. So it, ease of implementation is what I would say, one of the things I would say to my folk, you know, to my peers for looking for something like that, or, you know, recommending that one. It's awesome. And now ha having gone through this journey of implementation and rollout, like how has Atlin helped you and the team? It's uh, funny because I uh, I've been talking about that uh, so much, and I asked my guys to give me a, a feedback. Right. So, what is your experience? Because my experience might be very different. The way we released it at the beginning was that these two main developers that were working on it, and then the rest of the BI team joined. And so we kind of tested it on someone who didn't know anything about that one, uh, you know, and then asked that person. But that person had a data background, right? And then we asked a couple of our uh, advanced users to test it. And so we kind of gradually were kind of seeing where, and, and, and I was listening to the feedback, trying to figure out how I can, when I open it to entire company, how can I uh, simplify that process? And one of the things that I heard, uh, you know, even within maybe first two or three weeks from Kate, who was the main developer on, uh, on that, she said, oh my God, I am I'm in Atlan every day and I use it in my work. And I'm like, right, it's a catalog. She said, no, 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 it's something that, you know how I've been documenting everything in Excel and I go back and forth and so now I have everything in one place and when I do the next project, I actually look at the thing and I, I see an impact right away because of the lineage. And so I, I, can, I can reduce my, uh, you know, research time for every project by looking at the lineage. And, uh, you know, another developer was reporting, you know, in, in uh, the same for the Tableau, because oftentimes users come in and say, well, the dashboard is great, but can we take a look at, uh, at the actual source data, right? And there are ways to, to do it in Tableau, but it is so much easier if you see which view fits into that particular dashboard, and then you can explore that view in Adlon. So we, uh, and I already mentioned the ad hooks, right? So we um, now have all of them documented within the tool and everyone in the company can go and find one. So all of these things contributed to us being able to be more productive. And, and that was a, a big surprise. I, I knew it was a, a, a catalog tool. I knew we're now capturing definitions. I knew we had a, a way now to uh, verify or you know kind of put some uh, feedback on a data assets so people know at which stage of the development they are. I know, I knew it would be more like uh, you know around data um, controls and around data governance, but I didn't realize how much you know help we'll get in our day-to-day -day work uh, by using the tool. And I'm in it um, every day. That's amazing. Do you have any sense of how much productivity it might have created for your team, or how much time it would have? Like, do you have any sense of what that? value would look like? Um, 
I would say, you know, considering um, specifically the ad hoc, right? If we have about, uh, you know, maybe 40 or 50 every month, and if we, uh, you know, do them on a regular basis, sometimes the same person is not available, so another person should step in. So, you know, you can kind of calculate, say, an hour each, right? And then if you have them all in Athlon and you can actually look for it yourself if you're not the person who created it to begin with or have a user who is already familiar with it uh, go and look at it you spent what 10 minutes maximum uh, so that's uh, that's just one example uh, it's hard to measure you know the feelings that you have when one of the things that I always experience as a challenge at CAC is when um, the new leadership comes in right and you need to start all over again explaining, right, what you did and where you're going with it. When you log into Atlan uh, and they see with their own eyes everything that we did and they're like, wow, okay, then now they do know what the team is and what we do. It's just so much easier uh, because it's, um, it's a tool that is very user-friendly. It does not require a lot of preparation or a lot of training for people to start using it. So first new hire that we had um, since we actually opened the tool to entire company a couple months back uh, came to me on the second or third day asking for the user account in Atlon because he was told, oh, well, you are a new reinsurance manager and all our reinsurance information uh, is documented in this thing called Atlon. You know, so that became a part of onboarding and training. Imagine how much time will that save? Instead of him spending maybe two or three weeks looking for, for this information and then finding out that it's from 2017 or something like that. That's amazing. Actually, on that note, like, are there things that you think are specific to the insurance industry itself that are specific challenges that, that you think make this pain a lot more in insurance versus maybe other, other industries? Well, uh, the specific challenges is the always operating using very fractured and a lot of legacy systems. Another thing is there is so much uh, relationship with outside vendors and a lot of data comes in that is very different. You know, imagine banking data versus Photoshop data. <laughs> uh, tracking all this information is uh, usually a challenge and creates and, and, and it costs a lot of money also. Figuring out, uh, you know, vendors and then also kind of monitoring the payment history to vendors and figuring out, you know, who is the best vendor. It's something that uh, is not an easy task. And so if you have something like Atlon where you can document um, and then present that to a business team, um, that's, that's one of the things that uh, really helps. So the fractured and legacy systems, uh, tons of vendors, um, managing data at the product level because it's just simply a time thing. Like product team is way too busy and there's this disconnect between the sales and, and product usually and they, they do their own things kind of running in parallel. So giving them ability to create a customer centric view of the data is something that we can do in data warehouse, but documenting that is something that we can do within the Atlon. And I, I wanna mention specifically that, uh, you know, we are not using, we're using glossary of course, as glossary for terms and, you know, definitions, but we're also using glossary as a way to document our projects where we specifically, uh, you know, gather all the information around certain areas, which is very challenging sometimes for uh, insurance, you know, um, they're trying to predict things looking at the future, you know. <laughs> It's something that maybe, you know, existed way ahead of time, you know, even before the data science became a thing. That is true. Same, same, same by the way, about the, um, uh, you know, the reverse appeal thing, something that we've been using in insurance for quite some time now, uh, even at my previous company, because it's really difficult <clears throat> to do those types of things in a production environment. So sometimes you do certain things, some fuzzy logic, whatever you do, in a data warehouse, and then you kind of feed it into, say, customer service application. Yeah, so those kind of things. Yeah. Um, one, one of the things also that was specifically challenging for uh, CAC was the culture, basically. And uh, that's been, um, you know, 
bringing company to become a truly data-driven company is what was my passion for the last so many years. I sometimes feel myself more as a training manager than a BI manager because we organize so many things around this. And it's just that people are so set in, in their way of doing business and busy. And I sympathize with that, right? So I, I cannot just disrupt the whole process, come in and say, hey, you know, stop using that, now use like this. We just don't do that. And, uh, you know, we're just trying to facilitate and make them as, you know, kind of support and lead them, make them as independent as they can be. One of the challenges also is that uh, insurance is a regulated business and there is a lot of uh, regulatory and compliance things that we need to follow through. And for that is actually the glossary. And, you know, like if I look in Adlan right now, I know all my personally protective information where it lives and how, how I can protect it from uh, being, uh, being exposed. And, and, and we do recommend, recommend those things to business. Got it. Got it. I actually do want to touch in on that, that use case that you have around using sort of glossary for project documentation, because I know that's, that's a little unique uh, in the way that you're using it. Do you want to tell us a little bit about just maybe give us an example of a project that did that? Yeah. So for example, we have uh, one person on my team who was sort of attached to our finance and actuaries department for the past year or so, uh, automating the year uh, IBNR process. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with the term, but it's uh, incurred but not reported losses. This is basically something that needs to happen every quarter, um, you know, and it involves, um, you know, actuarials providing some data to finance people and finance people manipulating with this in a certain way and putting it in the general ledger and comes on company books. So it's super uh, complicated. And we actually documented it so that even if that person who um, is uh, working on it is not available on vacation or whatever, uh, you know, there is a process document that you can find under the projects in the glossary. There is also, you know, kind of a flow diagram. There is also a narrative explaining what it is and what it does and examples of the documents and links to the specific uh, sites and explanations of the procedures and all of this. And uh, we kind of feel that this is where we can benefit the most from the business standpoint, because when we start talking about uh, Atlan with the business group, they would look at it and say, well, we don't really use um, Redshift, uh, you know, finance, for example, we don't have a financial module, they have their own environment. But when they found out that they have uh, an ability to now educate themselves about some of those things, um, they were very excited. So we have, we're treating glossary as a product now, we, my, the future state of it would be, well, here is a list of insurance terminology, right? Something that everyone who joins insurance needs to be aware of. So this is just, you know, the definition. Well, then there is, um, um, you know, calculated metrics and KPIs where we need actually provide how we do those metrics, what goes into, and then that links to all the data assets. And then there is also, well, there is a process around it here is a document, uh, you know, the process document. So that kind of becomes all in, you know, uh, all inclusive sort of uh, way to document the entire area, I would say. It just, uh, it, it will require work. I do realize that we probably will spend more time now in the tool than initially when we were setting it up, but it's because we now know what it can do. And I, I, and I see more and I have more and more ideas as, as I talk to, uh, to my peers. Another thing that I just recently we, we discussed with our um, uh, CIO is that if we bring our production environment, uh, right, right now we don't have it in Atlas, if we bring it in the database that fits into production, that would allow developers to do the same sort of impact analysis as we do now for our projects, which will simplify their work quite a bit. And also that would um, give us maybe some ability to, uh, you know, institute some data quality controls. Uh, we have a few right now where we, you know, check on certain things that break uh, the whole flow and we have alerts, you know, that run and, and, and notify us when that happens. But, um, you know, this is not like a all, you know, encapsulating uh, thing. It can uh, allow us to do it in a very systematic and kind of uh, rigid sort of way, which is what data quality requires. So more work to do, absolutely. That's amazing. Uh, and I, actually on that note, like I know you started out with Atlin 
for your internal data team. And I know you've recently started rolling it out to the broader, broader organization. Uh, I know you did a survey recently, actually, uh, with the broader business. Like, what is the kind of response you've been receiving from the broader organization? I sent this email to the entire company and I added the uh, survey to it. And I said, if you're interested, I didn't want to push anyone, right? So, but I knew that, uh, you know, people who are curious about data, they will be interested. So I got about 50% of entire company uh, answered that they want to be in this training that we were going to introduce that. Wow. And I was like, wow. So we had the training to about half of the company. And after that training, I sent a follow-up um, thing announcement where I said, well, now when you saw it, are you interested in joining and becoming a user? And I got about maybe half of those people responding, yeah, I'm interested to, to have it. And so uh, that was kind of amazing. And that actually uh, speaks volumes about how much more data savvy the company became for the past five years and how much more curiosity out there is about the data. Even if you, it's not part of your day-to-day -day function, there are people there that work for claims, you know, that may not have um, exposure to a lot of things, but still they were, they were interested. And, um, uh, you know, recently I had um, another demo that I did just for our uh, leadership team, and that's been rescheduled a few times. So it just happened last week. And um, uh, at the end of the demo, um, someone asked me, so what, what, what is it that you're asking us? <laughs> it's a great tool. We're very excited. And, and that's when I said, well, you know, some of the things need to happen. You know, you have to talk to your team. You have to encourage them um, and, and kind of uh, be an example yourself. So I'm just pushing everyone. That's amazing. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I know you've been like, you know, amazing champion. I think this, just the story of, I think, how you implemented from day zero with like no warehouse, no BI to like, you know, I think just... Yeah. Like, you know, tooling like Atlin tends to be a little niche inside organizations, right? So like, I think that kind right. of response itself, I, I think you're absolutely right. I think it comes down to how data savvy you've been able to make the organization. Yeah, yeah. I, I think we went from the, the times when we were actually defending the idea of Data Warehouse when I joined. I think three months into it, I guess I got an email from CEO asking, well, I, I saw this article, you know, out there that says, is Data Warehouse dead? Uh, can you give me a reason why it's not? <laughs> and, and so I gave him six reasons why in this particular environment it, <laughs> it wasn't the, the case. Um, but the, the truth is that uh, it's a team. We, we have such a small but very diverse, everyone on my team is so different from different background, culturally, you know, linguistically, technically, but they are all, every one of them is just super, um, you know, proficient and, and so knowledgeable. So we, we kind of managing it because we have a good, a good um, collaboration within the team itself. So we do, and in a small company, these are the people who are wake up in the morning and they are sysadmins all of a sudden. And then in the afternoon, they're doing ad hoc and later in the day, they're doing presentation. And so it's just, so many things that we're doing, um, and I cannot be more proud than you know that the team uh, accomplished for the past uh, few years. I hope they will all kind of persevere through the times that we have now, and and you know we will be able to continue working together. That's amazing. Uh, actually, do you have any tips for any other data leaders uh, or your peers around building building a diverse data team? Um, well, one of the things that is just letting, uh, letting creativity flow and not imposing um, a lot of restrictions. Um, you know, sometimes you have to, um, you know, kind of exercise the critical thinking a little bit. And yeah, you're the manager and, you know, you have your own ideas, but sometimes you want, want to step back and let people, um, you know, do things. And in my opinion, you know, if you empower them and if you let them to be creative and if you let them make mistakes and learn from them, but that's okay, it's part of the process, then at the end of the day, everyone wins. So we don't have a formal meetings, for example, but we, do, we have a lot of brainstorming sessions together. And I, I validate the data every day. I, you know, they don't really like me sometimes because I have an eye for defects. I don't know why, I just 
find them easily. <laughs> uh, but everyone has their strengths. I guess um, you know this is what um, is important that to have to understand what the strength is and kind of support that. Awesome. Um, so changing tacks a little bit, uh, what surprised you the most about Aslan? What surprised me the most is it's how how we felt like we are talking to the colleagues all the time. This is it's really different. Even you know, I'm very happy with uh, you know some other vendors that we're working with. We have a really good relationship with account manager, and you know, I'm building on that relationship. So kind of my if we have an issue, we can we can have some support. But you don't really need to um, to do that with Atlan because uh, you know you're there it's uh, just a turnaround on on issues was fantastic we we had about maybe uh, i think kate mentioned to me the other day when i asked her she said well during the time i was working with them i had 20 or so issues and i report the issues the next time i log in and it's gone it's fixed and she was uh, very very surprised with how quickly and also you listen i think uh, the way we were testing is we were kind of applying it to our environment and some of the feedback that we were giving, uh, you know, you know, you're, you're listening. We can see that you, you know, go and you implement things like uh, based on your user's experience, which is something that is um, that makes us feel very, very um, comfortable. And uh, you know, this, you know, check-ins. How you guys were helping us with ideas on how to say simplify the use for some of the people who are not as technical as me others may be. And so we came up with this idea and I had, uh, you know, uh, a presentation that Ashwin gave us to kind of show, um, you know, let's start them with the glossary. Maybe you as a developer, you go and you start discovering right away, but maybe they have to start here because then it will streamline their search. Um, so all of the things is, I, I guess, uh, uh, you know, to sum it up, it's just, it's a fantastic customer service i i don't even want to call it a service it's it's something that is so organic to you guys i don't know i i i don't think you just lost it yet i know it might happen as you grow bigger and bigger and get more and more clients uh don't lose that touch it's that's what makes you special very very different fantastic Actually, on that note, if there was a message you could give the entire Atlan team, and we will actually play this in our in our town hall, uh, is that if there's a message that you'd give the entire Atlan team, what is that message that you would give them? What would you share with them? Um, I would say uh, keep that small uh, team mentality, right? So uh, support each other in a ways that uh, will help the entire company to grow and be successful. And I, I, I've seen, um, you know, some of the successes you guys had past year, and it got me excited because you, you, you get us on board, not just as clients, but also as people who kind of, um, you know, feel that you are our um, counterparts, your colleagues, um, you know, your people who help. And, uh, you know, just don't lose that spirit of helping data people around the world. Awesome. <laughs> How would you rate your experience uh, of working with Atlan on a scale of one to 10? I would say 10. I mean, I want to say, and I'm not trying to put it in a rosy color. It's just truly was very different. Uh, and like I said, I had years and years of experience working with different uh, vendors. It's been very different. Um, and I think that's, you know, it's not ideal, right? Tool, tools uh, have issues, right? You work on them, you, you make releases, you make things happen. It's not about having just, oh, it's a perfect tool. No, it's a work in progress. It's a great tool, but it's a, it's a really good customer experience. That's why I, I have 10. That's amazing. Wow. Uh, I did not expect it, and that's huge. Uh, <laughs> uh, is there any advice that you would give to any other data leader that's evaluating Athen? I would tell them, you know, you have to evaluate the tool, but you also have to evaluate the things like, um, you know, additional benefits that having that kind of tool will bring to your company, the uh, productivity, um, the ability to turn around projects uh, quicker. This is something that uh, a lot of uh, much bigger, you know, 
catalogs of catalog management, um, you know, even though they might have more elaborated systems, they just don't have. I think this tool was built not just as a catalog management tool. And I don't think you, you might even advertise it as much as it should be advertised. It's just, it has, it's really a home for uh, data people to collaborate, to discuss things, to join uh, together and, uh, you know, uh, and go from there. So I would say, think about it as um, you, you're shopping for a home for your data team. Wow, uh, <laughs> that's amazing. Um, so changing gears a little bit, actually, and want to jump back into your, your data strategy at CSE over the next three or five years, right? Like, what is, as you think about your data strategy over the next three or five years, what are the big priorities? What are the big, big things you want to sort of go in and solve? Mm -hmm. This next five years would be very different from the first five years. The first five years, we were build, building things, right? We were creating things. Um, the next five years, I would really want to help a different business group to address some of the lagging technical debt issues, I would say. So there's a lot of things that we will be doing that would be uh, aimed at automating, uh, eliminating manual uh, interactions with data because that's prone to um, errors. And um, basically my strategy would be aligned with uh, the strategic goals of those respective business teams. So we're already uh, planning on a round of interviews. And the way I did it the first time around was I, I went in and talked to every single leader in the company. And that's how we came up with those areas, right, of pain. I, I'm going to do it again. I'm doing it every year, actually, to see where things are. And then we will come up with a specific plan. Another major, major goal for me would be to uh, continue pushing through, um, you know, and, and training people and educating people towards uh, making CSE even more data-driven than it is today and having people um, understand the data better and uh, use it to make um, the right decisions. So basically just aligning with the business goals as well as supporting the training and onboarding of the new employees would be my strategic goal for the next two or three years, probably. And then whatever comes, uh, you know, we, we, you know, there's a lot of business plans that are in the making and we will be supporting it. And the good thing is we can support them now. Got it. So in some ways, now that you've built the foundation, now you want to like build on top of the, the foundation. Exactly, exactly. Uh, where do you see Atlan fitting into your longer term strategy? Like what is your dream state with Atlan? Well, my dream state, making it truly the tool that everyone in the company um, uses. And um, one of the challenges um, around it would be to create a process on how we're going to start, um, you know, going through glossary, validating every, every single term, making it a company, um, CC company approved uh, term. And, and kind of go through that process of reviewing that because we just loaded it, we, we put what we knew. Now it's time for us to start working with it. So that's um, one of the things. And another uh, thing that I mentioned is really treating, treating it as a product pretty much. And it's just like uh, so many things that we can um, do with that. Um, basically documenting and um, evaluating and putting controls around the data and making sure that every new project when it gets created, the person who works on it is aware of uh, which definitions exist and which definitions they have to use so that the data along, um, you know, all the dashboards aligns. You know, it takes, um, it takes uh, maybe one or two mistakes to lose trust of the users in your ability to provide the accurate data. It takes sometimes years to get it back. So we, 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 we should be very careful around those things. And it's really, really important to me um, you know, to make sure that there is a process like that and everyone is um, involved. Got it. So in some ways, like almost use Atlan as a tool to help build trust with your, your end users. Exactly. Because exactly. I feel that that is so easy. Uh, it's, um, it's all there in front of you. And we, we just haven't even scratched, I would say, the surface of some of those um, additional things that we can do in Atlan. Like I said, uh, data controls, not only for um, data warehouse, but for production environment, the quality of data, the impacts of the development uh, releases. Sometimes, you know, we kill things because we don't know, oh, there is some downstream thing that, you know, depends on that. Now it's all there. So 
I want to make sure that it's actually used uh, to the company advantage. And uh, I sometimes may get a bit overwhelming for people <laughs> because I want them to understand that there is a benefit in using this. That's amazing. In using this tool. That's amazing. Yeah. On that note, I know <laughs> data culture is a topic that you're very passionate about. Uh, and I know you've been building the data culture in a very, very unique way, actually, like <laughs> lots of interesting rituals that you've put in place uh, to sort of build that broader data culture. Tell us a little bit about those those cultural rituals and, and what you learned and how how which ones worked. Encouraging and sometimes rewarding uh, is really, really a good thing. It's just uh, sometimes um, it's like a parent working with a child, right? So when we did the formal trainings on Tableau, say, you know, people would come in and they listen and they go and you don't really know if anything of that was even relevant for them and whether they, you know, learn something. When you instead sending a bunch of questions to them saying simple questions, right? But you can find the answers in Tableau. And for those who find them first, you have a little surprise at the end. That gets them engaged and interested. So it's more like, um, uh, like little things like that where you get a lot more personal. And uh, we started doing things like breakfast with BI, right? So where Unfortunately, right now, it's really hard to do something like that. Um, but we were doing them regularly, maybe once a month, where we will <clears throat> serve the breakfast. People will enjoy the you know, muffins and whatever. And we will introduce in you things that we just developed and talk about the things. And it was open to all. I've never limited participation to say, oh, only technical people, only data analyst people. No, it was always open to the entire company, whoever was uh, interested. And uh, we, we learned along the way that, uh, you know, after that, we had some really, really uh, good questions from people, which means they are listening. And maybe even if three or four people just got more um, comfortable with using dashboards, that was worth it. And we were joking along the way saying that if you participate and answer the questions, you will have a chance to have a dinner with BI. <laughs> just think those <laughs> those things. I picked up some of these ideas from my, you know, participation in uh, say Tableau conferences where I met with others who were facing the same challenges on doing, um, you know, customer user adoption. And uh, another thing was that I felt sometimes people feel, um, uh, you know, when when they're trying to ask a question, um, they really um, feel that if they put something in writing, it might come out, you know, somehow not very smart and people avoid uh, you know, instead of um, asking us, they're trying to address it, and then sometimes they make mistakes. To avoid that kind of, because they, you know, they don't want to, you know, tell the entire world that I don't know something, right? So I um, had this data doctor hour, where one of my team would be just, you know, present. It would be an hour set in a conference room somewhere, and anyone can pop in and ask any question, and, you know, we can work them through and, and help them rather than having, uh, you know, some formal kind of, and I know sometimes we want them to, you know, submit a ticket because we have our planning to do and have, but that was mostly for people who were curious about data and wanted to learn more. And we found that it was very useful for a lot of folks. And, you know, so we kept doing it for some time. Um, we also tried to have, a, like we call them a round table, um, meetings with other data analysts because each of the business groups has a, their own data person who doing some of the reports. And the idea was to have it as a sort of a stand up for analysts saying, going around saying, I'm working on that particular data project this week, I need that help or I'm stuck, you know, those types of things. But it kind of uh, evolved into being more of a, like I said, a round table where we discuss certain things and uh, people talk about their areas and educate others on what in this uh, in these areas, and um, so we've been using that even continuously through lockdown, because this is uh, something that you can do easily on um, Zoom um, and stuff like that. I had a, a few more ideas in my sleeve of uh, uh, you know surprises, but uh, we just unfortunately right now um, are limited in somewhat in our capacity to do this interactive types of activity. Yeah. But you have to, you absolutely have to do that to keep people engaged and interested in, in learning about the data. 
Yeah, I think that's true for like, I think people miss this, right? Like, because data people, we're also technical, like we, we focus on the technical aspects of things very often, like we build stuff, uh, yeah. to get the the user adoption and the culture enablement and, and those things yeah. that, that actually are, are what makes ultimately, like, unless our, our final products are used, uh, you right. know, as data people, it, it's, yeah. it's, not, it's not valid. Um, and it's unfortunate because a lot of data projects, you know, statistically just, you know, they take sometimes months and years to develop, but ended up not being used. And that is uh, something that is really driving, uh, you know, uh, people in the data teams to kind of reconsider even where they work, because it's just so disheartening to see that you spend so much time and effort on something that is just not taking off. And so that's why... I keep pushing for uh, for user adoption as being my my strategic goal. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I think we've seen that. I think the minute the mindset also goes a little bit from the output, like the success criteria shifts from it being that you shipped a dashboard and you cleared a Jira ticket versus it becomes more about who are the users? What are the business problems? Can you solve the business problem, right? Uh, we've yeah. seen then the North Star shifts automatically. And then when the North Star right. shifts automatically, you're building things the right way in some ways. Mm -hmm. Solve for that. that yeah. That's a very good point because we actually, um, you know, worked on it for quite some time and took us time to explain why. Uh, it's just part of the requirements that I ask from the businesses. When you put together the BRD, the business requirement document for us to build something for you, don't tell us, that, don't think about like data objects. Like don't tell us I need this table or something. Tell us what kind of business questions this dashboard will answer for you. And we will find a way um, to, to bring this data for you. Uh, so that that proven to be a, such a big challenge because, uh, and I've seen it in many business groups when um, they kind of sort of have an idea and it's it might be in their head, but putting them down into specific questions is, is like 30% of the work to me because yeah. then it makes my work so much easier. And then at the end of the day, the product will produce yeah. is actually going to be useful. There is some resistance sometimes from people saying, well, we, all, we need all of it. You know, you ask the data question, say, what kind of data do you need? Oh, we, we need all of it. But how are you going to use it? Oh, <laughs> 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 we, will, we will decide along the way. So we've been <clears throat> working uh, on that from the beginning to try to make them understand that we're not doing it because we want to irritate them. We're just doing it because that will help us to build something that at the end of the day will help them. Yeah. So yeah. you're exactly right. Yeah. Without having uh, business questions, it's really difficult to build a, a, a truly productive kind of data environment. Yeah, yeah, I know. And it's a lot of work, I think, to get there because people, I think natural human tendency is to tell you what to build because they have an idea and like they exactly. just want to tell you what to build. Versus like, here's the problem that we're looking to solve. But I think if you're successfully able to dig in into like and ask the why, the why, the why, like what's the problem? Yeah. Exactly. And even if we won't get all the questions at the beginning, we're just trying to educate ourselves to an extent that when we have a review meetings, we actually start asking those questions, just being curious about the business. And that's why it's so important. Yeah, I'm not an insurance professional, right? But I have to understand the insurance business to an extent to be able to uh, see, you know, how these questions can be uh, addressed. And so to the point of what kind of team we have is, I don't think it's possible to be productive as a data person in insurance without understanding uh, at least the fundamentals of the insurance business. And that, um, that's why it's, it makes it so challenging to replace people, hire new people is uh, when they don't have previous experience in insurance. Um, you, you start to realize that you, you don't have to do a lot of training. And again, going back to Atlon is, well, then I'm going to send them to the glossary <laughs> <laughs> because we have all fundamental insurance terms right there. Yeah, I think the data leader's pain on like when somebody in your team leaves is is like a real thing. <laughs> like I have, I have once cried for like, <laughs> I cried once for three yeah. hours because... <laughs> An analyst quit on me exactly like two weeks before a project was due. He was my most senior analyst. And I was like, I don't know how I'm going to deliver this project. 
<laughs> he's yeah. the only one who knows everything about the data so i think that pain that yeah. emotional pain is a is a huge thing it is it's always a fear because you know in my previous jobs when i was in analytical role and i created something <clears throat> My boss said at the meeting, he said, what if something happens and she gets under the body? <laughs> I was like, please don't say. It. But the truth is, you know, we can get on, like, you know, we can live, we can change the jobs. <clears throat> and if you, <clears throat> if you don't have anything, you know, documented, if you don't have a, a proper transition, it's, uh, it's, it's creating uh, challenges for the rest of the team, for sure. Yeah, no, really big fun. ones. Um, awesome. So cool. I think we're actually at the end of our questions, but we have a surprise section for you. I oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> so we actually have a rapid fire segment, like a fun rapid fire segment to close out the interview. Mm. Um, so I'm going to actually zoom through. We're going to start with like, a, like some warm up stuff. So I'm going to start with like, I'll give you like two options and then you pick one on, on which one you pick. Works? Sure. Okay, cool. Uh, texting or talking? Uh, talking. <clears throat> hey, cake or pie? Um, cake, I would say. Hmm. Climb a mountain or jump from a plane? Uh, climb the mountain. <laughs> I'm afraid of heights. <laughs> oh, mountain is high too, but it's bad. <laughs> <laughs> um, dark chocolate or milk chocolate? Milk chocolate. For journaling. Paper or computer? Computer. Hmm. LA or New York? Um, New York. Oh, interesting. <laughs> um, why? Out of curiosity? Uh, I'm a big city girl. I grew up in Moscow. Uh, and so I understand New York a lot better than LA. LA is not a big city. It's just a collection of small cities to me. Got it. Invisibility or super strengths? Uh, super strengths. Okay, awesome. So we're going to do a slightly different version. That was just the warm up. Now we're going to do a data rapid fire. <laughs> oh my god! Uh, <laughs> uh, so we'll start with something maybe easy: data warehouse or data lake. Um, data warehouse lake. <laughs> <laughs> I can explain why. Go for it. Well, uh, you know, take insurance, right? Uh, there is a place for very structured data. Um, you know, insurance, financials, everything lives in a very structured environment. Uh, there is no replacement for it. But there is also additional benefits from having a non-structured data available for analysis, specifically if you're thinking about growth and development and, uh, you know, the new vendor or, you know, customer-centric view of stuff. So um, to me, uh, Still, technology, uh, there are reasons to have, to continue having this, maybe more than six now, reasons of having data warehouse, but also uh, complementing it with the lake. And also, you know, uh, everyone jokes about it, but, you know, you have to make sure it's a lake, not a swamp. It's very important to understand the data behind it um, before using it. Makes sense. So. Um, no, I, I think also there's a lot of convergence happening between data lakes and warehouses. And I like how you right. said <laughs> data way, uh, warehouse lake. And I think there's data lake house and there's all these other. Um, right. uh, <laughs> I'm sure we can. Um, awesome. Dashboards or reports? Uh, dashboards. Why? Well, uh, you know, it's just from the standpoint of an analyst, it gives you so much more um, answers to so many questions in one place and just one report can cover, for sure. Cool. This might be a controversial one. Excel or Google Sheets? Uh, Excel. Why is controversial? I'm just, uh, you know, I'm just, um, I don't want to say old. <laughs> I just, I want to say it's in my blood. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I grew up with it. I grew up on Excel. <laughs> um, awesome. Data mesh or data fabric? It is, it is, a, it is a, a funny one. Uh, isn't mesh a kind of a fabric? I, I would say I have to understand a lot better. You know, I know kind of conceptually, but I have to understand a lot better before calling it a, a valid choice. So right now I will pass on making a... <laughs> you and the rest of the data ecosystem at this point. <laughs> Uh, um, 
I will go with one last one. SQL or uh, Spark? SQL. Again, from historical standpoint. <laughs> awesome. Uh, and I, I, I can add to it. You know, I feel that this, um, there are so many um, companies in the world that still need uh, that kind of skill set. And unfortunately, I don't see a lot of it coming in from the new grads. And that's why the hiring is becoming a challenge. I think it's underestimated and undervalued at the point of time, but um, it's, it's just not right. Um, it's still very, very useful. It's still required by a lot of companies. So I would say don't hesitate to take the supplementary course when you're graduating. It will help you to find a job at insurance company. <laughs> Uh, no, awesome. No, I, I fully agree. I think SQL is like, SQL is like the language of oh, it. Exactly. Yeah. And it makes sense, right? No, absolutely. And I think now it's, it's really made a comeback also, right? Like I think there was this, in the middle, there was this period where everyone was like, no SQL, no SQL. But I think now we're, we're you know, I think SQL is, uh, I think it's SQL here to say. So I would right. add, agree like I think my my advice to anyone who wants to pursue a career in data would definitely be learn SQL <laughs> include that into your uh, toolbox right for sure yeah absolutely awesome that's all I had uh, thank you so much Larissa this was great this was also super motivational I'll actually play like some of this in our town hall we actually have it coming up on Friday uh, for the okay. uh, is there say any hi to say hi to uh, Atlanians and I, I do follow you guys and wish you all the best in the 2022. I know you you've been uh, you have a great future in front of you, and uh, you know having uh, founders who are so passionate about stuff is just uh, you know another another good thing. So really nice talking to you, and um, you know let's continue our uh, collaboration into 2022 and beyond. Thank you for believing in us from like a very early stage, and like yeah, super excited to like help you get to that data vision in in the next couple of years. Thank you so much, Prokopa. Thanks, Larissa. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.